And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. Uh, okay, uh, right now I'm going to talk about the basics of, uh, of radioactive decay or radiometric dating. As usual, I'll just uh, make it short and uh, uh, tell you about the basics. Usually my videos are basic data. But in the future, I'll be uh, talking about the more advanced data. So this is something we learned from school. So it should not be hard for anybody to understand. Okay. We know that elements have atoms, right? Uh, so atoms of several elements, we know they have so many neutrons. Okay. And when that happens... And that's a fact. So, atoms of several elements have so many neutrons, so they become unstable. Unstable isotopes. Sorry, unstable isotopes. And these unstable isotopes decay. Okay? These unstable isotopes decay. And what happens when they decay? These unstable isotopes decay by removing some of, the, of their particles to be stable again. Okay, so we started with unstable isotopes and then ended up with stable isotopes. So unstable to stable. Okay, now this process is called radioactive decay. So the decay or the unstable that I'm talking about, okay is called the parent isotopes and the unstable one is called daughter isotope so parent and daughter stable uh, unstable then stable okay it's like an hourglass uh, when sand is uh, at the top and then it flows down okay the sand on top is unstable one, and the uh, and when it uh, decays, uh, it's the flowing down of the sand. Okay, and when it reaches the bottom of the uh, hourglass, it becomes stable, and that is the daughter isotopes. Okay, so parent and daughter. So that's the basic explanation. Uh, I'll give a few examples uh, of parent and uh, daughter uh, isotopes. Uh, parent isotopes, uh, example, uh, let's say carbon, and then daughter isotope, nitrogen. So the carbon is this unstable one, and the nitrogen is the stable one. So carbon decays, and then it's unstable, right? It's the parent. And the nitrogen is the daughter. So it it, it, it becomes stable after the carbon uh, remove its particles to be stable again. So that stability is the is uh, nitrogen. So carbon unstable, the nitrogen stable. Okay? Alright, now uh, the evolutionary creation is uh, battle in this case. Evolutionists love to use the isochron method, okay? Isochron method is, to me, the best method, dating method, okay? Because it, uh, it uses several dating methods on a rock, and when they give a more or less uh, same date, then we can rely that this rock is of this age or of this age, okay? So that's isochron method, and evolutionists love to use that to try and debunk uh, young earth creationists. And the primary target of this evolutionary uh, version of isochron method, because young earth creationists also have our own isochron method version. So evolutionists love to use the isochron method to try and debunk the young earth creationists' uh, initial conditions of the rock argument. 
initial conditions of the rock argument. Okay, like I said, isochron is a good way to date rocks, but uh, evolutionary bias made them ignore the problem of isochron at least on their side, on their version. Ignore. They have to, of course. I'll give just two examples for how it fails on their side. Okay. But oh, of course, there's also a failure on the uh, young earth creationist side, which we could discuss next time. But right now, I will have a basic uh, talk about how the evolutionary version of uh, isochron method fails. Just a short few lines, I think. Uh, uh, one paragraph. And we'll go deeper next time. The specific examples next time. Okay? Uh, isochron in the evolutionary version fails because different isotopes, okay, diffusion or spreading occurs. Okay? So diffusion is the spreading. Okay? So it fails because the isotopes diffusion or spreading occurs. Okay? An example of this is crystallization of igneous rocks. Okay? The, is the crystallization of uh, igneous rocks will take place at different rates. Okay? So they should uh, be the same rate if uh, isochron really uh, works in the evolutionary uh, version. Okay? And it depends on whether they cooled underground or at the Earth's surface. Okay? That's one example. Okay? So it depends. Cooled underground or at the Earth's surface. And we get these rates. Another example, I think I'll just give two so that this won't be a long uh, video. And the, this is only the basics, like I said. Another example is when several diffusion uh, spreading occur mechanisms are happening. So when several uh, diffusion mechanisms are happening, the result of each diffusion uh, factor leaves overall temperature reliance unchanged. Okay, so if you are an evolutionist, you should understand this. And if, if you are familiar with radiometric dating, you should understand this. I gave you the basics, and you, you try to uh, solve this, your rescuing device, whatever it is. Okay, so again, my second example, if you didn't get it, is when several diffusion uh, things or a mechanism happen, the result of each diffusion factor uh, does leave the overall temperature reliance unchanged, affecting the uh, rates. Okay? So, good luck. That will be all. Uh, thank you.